Why would an adventurer use a sword frog? Historically, swords were most often worn at the hip in either a sheath or a scabbard. The purpose of a sheath or scabbard was primarily to cover the blade to prevent the wearer from injuring themselves or people around them whilst walking around. It also serves a secondary function of covering the blade to protect it from the elements. A sword frog however, as far as I can tell, is more of a modern invention and is mainly used by the live-action roleplay LARP community. Swords used in LARP are typically made out of foam, meaning a wearer does not need to worry about accidentally cutting themselves or about their weapon rusting in the rain. As such, a sword frog does not cover most of a blade as it simply does not need to. Covering all of the blade in this context gives no more benefit than just covering part of it. Here is what a sword frog may look like. Image shows a leather tube with openings on either end. There are buckles on the tube to adjust how wide or narrow it is. There are also leather loops attached to the tube so that a belt can be passed through the loops, allowing the whole thing to hang from the belt at a slight upwards angle. HTTPS colon slash slash www.medievalcollectibles.com slash product slash Geralt dash diagonal dash sword dash frog slash. So, my question is, for what practical reason might an adventurer in a stereotypical medieval fantasy setting wear a sword frog? As there are no archaeological findings of sword frogs from the medieval period that I know of, so adding them into the setting would be very anachronistic. Whilst I could simply explain the existence of sword frogs as being a fashion accessory, something else for nobles to decorate or something to show that you own a sword, even if you aren't currently wearing it, I'm specifically looking for practical reasons to justify their existence as not every adventurer is going to care about how they look. For clarification, the sword frog may be either used on its own or in conjunction with either a sheath or scabbard, just as long as the sword frog has a purpose and a good reason for being there. For example, most sheaths and scabbards had either belt loops or their own belt built onto them, simply ignoring the inbuilt belt or belt loops just so the sword frog has a purpose is not a good enough reason. Magic is not off limits for this question, answerers are free to use whatever fantastical ideas they can come up with, but I would prefer if the majority of answers focused more on the mundane rather than the magical. If possible, the best answers should include testing of their proposed idea or a detailed enough explanation to allow someone else to test the idea, or any relevant experience, to see if the idea would work in real life, which subsequently would mean the idea would work in the fantasy world as well. You use them how they were designed to be used, to hold a scabbard to a belt, or wrapped around the shoulder instead of a belt. They are not worn instead of a scabbard, they are part of the scabbard. They were actually fairly common, but like anything else were a question of preference. What angle you wanted to wear your sword at, the less vertical you want the sword the more likely you are to use a frog. Frogs are also adjustable, which is self-explanatory advantage. Most frogs kept the sheath more secure, especially with long swords by keeping them them from being able to flap around. They became even more common when metal sheaths started becoming common because the frog can hold the heavier scabbard at an angle. They can also move the sword into a lower position which is both more comfortable to draw for many people. A frog that can be separated from a metal sheath is also way cheaper than fitting more metal to a metal sheath and easier to clean to boot. Sometimes frogs are integrated, which costs a lot more, and means you have to take the entire belt off to remove the sword. When you know what they are actually made for it becomes really obvious how to wear them. They were invented multiple times, Japanese swords used them as well, when worn with armor, although they were often complex cloth arrangements instead of leather. Enter image description here. Enter image description here. Enter image description here. Enter image description here. They were really popular in WW2. Seriously search WW2 frogs sometime, daggers, bayonets, and swords all used them.